Good morning, folks. We're going to run down all the top news today, including the sun, weather, cosmology, catastrophism, and climate change. We're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on the sun was relatively quiet, apart from dancing plasma filaments we saw around the limb in those opening shots. We do still have the coronal holes, and if you recall, our thinking that the northern opening was attached to the polar region towards the back of it, there it is. The solar wind stream peaked yesterday just below 700 kilometers per second. That is generally considered to be a faster stream, but it took too long to onset. As density dropped and the speed slowly climbed, the magnetosphere had time to adjust and reconfigure. Instability marks were the peak geomagnetic disruption that we saw. Strongest storm on Earth right now is off the coast of northwest Australia. Tropical Damien dancing in the waters and sliding further to the west. Meanwhile, the same system we looked at in the U.S. took on the east. Tornadoes and high winds in the system, which is thankfully moving offshore today. By the way, it is still freezing and snowy behind that system. Records still falling. NASA updated their solar magnetic field animation, such that for the first time there is an exaggerated north-south viewing shift and you see the polar potential gap. We're hoping the solar orbiter's polar shots teach us more about it because we can tell there is a cyclical pattern to the polar potential, but we just need more data and better views of that pole. Solar Orbiter launches in two or three days. Let's start out in terms of the articles with an almost obligatory mention of a paper that examines not a single cosmology that we favor here at The Observers, but which shows among those they did study that the cold dark matter model is disfavored by comparison which is a conclusion we favor in general. A nice review for veterans, FYI for newcomers, and antidote to the incredulous. The dust of the galaxy rides the galactic winds and magnetic fields, the rippling current sheet traveling outward. It is indeed entrained with the dust and gases of past Nova events, making it much more dense than the current sheet in the solar system. They are flowing outward to deliver that material eventually to the circumgalactic medium, in fact, by the time the cold gases are exiting the galaxy, they are much more dust-dense than the hotter interior regions. Now, if you are new here and are thinking, so what, who cares about dusty waves in the galaxy? Well, it's going to deliver to the sun what the sun's current sheet delivers to Earth, a total sphere electromagnetic disruption. And since the galaxy has all that dust and gas, it will also deposit the same kind of material they say triggers type 1a supernova and recurrent nova. Too much stuff in the atmosphere of the star. And with our sun, it would be happening while the electromagnetic disruption from the current sheet was underway. Below this video, find the Cosmic Disaster movie link. The solar micronova is an astrophysically real possibility, and it's almost due again. So folks, our Twitter account is now gone for good. Permanent ban. And to be honest, it was exhausting, and I'm almost happy it's gone. But there are a few drawbacks. I've been posting the earthquake alert maps on Twitter now for about two years longer than I was supposed to. I did promise long ago that one day they would only be in our app, and that day is today, and not by my choice. FYI, that's the Disaster Prediction app. It does earthquakes, solar flares, geomagnetic storms, cosmic ray alerts, and if the sun ever begins accumulating material in the corona in a pre-nova phase, this is my only way into your hands to let you know. Be sure to set up which alerts you want to get. So now we've come to the climate, the topic that has the Congressional House Select Committee on the Climate Crisis demanding Google take down this YouTube channel by today. Well, today is not technically over yet, depending on when you're watching, but beyond the unconstitutionality of the request, so far Google has taken no steps against this channel. Even as Avaz, the world's supposed number one online activist group, starts a petition to take down climate-related videos, you can actually find our channel's name on that list. Interestingly, they attack a video I did a year ago called Fatal Flaw in Climate Change Science. Interesting thing is that the video talks about the need for solar particle forcing, which is the exact thing the officials of the world actually did. Now, I want you to actually think about this. While Congress is begging to get us taken down, while soy boys and their masters start petitions to take us down, it is Google and YouTube who have stood firm and allowed this channel to remain. It is the scientists worldwide and officials at the UN who did exactly what we said they should do. Who's got it right? Well, that's a pretty good cue for our top story of the day. Finally, another update on the Beaufort Gyre, and folks, it's still holding. It's been two years since Yale's cold climate bomb announcement. 
that the gyre was accumulating too much fresh cold water, wasn't releasing it as normal, and that when it did, it could dramatically cool the world, especially the northern hemisphere with its disruption of the Gulf Stream. Well, as I mentioned, it's still holding, still strengthening, and at this point, its release could be the blow to the hot water flows in the Atlantic. Now, while they say they don't expect a full Gulf Stream shutdown, which they always say, they are now saying they definitively expect the feared effects to some degree. The Yale team was in on this one as well, and if I may, it's been a while for them as Princeton was building a major lead in terms of which university was figuring out climate truth the fastest. And given the fact that it is in fact Google and YouTube standing by the channel, it is the world scientists who are doing exactly what we said they should do in the video that they want taken down. I imagine they'd probably have a heart attack if they saw the climate forcing movie or the seven part follow up series. Back to the observers research calls. Yesterday we opened up the third research group, but today we need some higher level folks. This is much more of a macro management. You are coordinating with the group leaders, helping to organize their information. If you don't want to grind out research, if you have the time and can handle being an operator, find a way to email me. That's the only prerequisite. Now for everyone else, indeed, this will help us start the groups faster, getting them up and running. The Quake group and Primitive Tech group are getting on their feet, and I expect to have some emails in my box from yesterday's group as well, which I will look at now. We greatly appreciate your support. Beaufort Gyre is the real deal. It can't last much longer. The Galactic Sheet is a dust delivery system, and Earthquake Alerts now on the app only from now on. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.